So we're back for the second video of the Pentax KX series. If you've watched the K1000 or the, the KM especially video, basically you've seen most of what is common between these cameras. So what we're going to look at in this video are the unique features of this camera and how they can be used and some of the things that set this apart from um, the other cameras in the lineup. So first thing I'm going to need to do here is mount my, my trusty 50 millimeter 1 to 2 cam uh, lens on the camera. And let's take a look here through the um, viewfinder. Can we do that? We can do that. And we're going to take a look at the mirror lockup. As you can see, oops, mirror's locked up. We'll, uh, mirror's not staying up. There it is. I wasn't pushing it far enough. And I'm going to ah, move this studio light, which is a glorified shop light. Here we go. I'm going to move this studio light over here. And uh, you're going to see the shutter open. There you go. You can see how reflective it got. Look, there I'm using a fluorescent bulb because I care about the environment. Uh, in, so that's to demonstrate how the mirror lockup works. What the mirror... Whoa! Everything's okay. What the mirror lockup allows you to do is uh, let's say that you uh, want to take a picture of an object and you want it to have no shake whatsoever. So uh, you're going to do a long exposure, like a Star Trails exposure. Uh, that's something this is really good for. You'd mount this on a tripod. You'd look through your, through your viewfinder here, and you'd set your exposure. Set your exposure. There it goes. And then you'd compose your image on this star trails of white light. So you'd compose your image, you'd set your exposure, you'd get all of your stuff done, and then flip, oops, that's the timer. Flip the uh, mirror lockup lever to the right, push the depth of field preview button, and now your mirror is locked up. Now, at this point, what you do is you're on the tripod, you've already got everything composed, you set your self-timer, set your self-timer, the anticipation, anticipation, what's going to happen? It's going to take a picture. There we go. And what it'll, it'll take a picture now, if you're on bulb mode, you wouldn't use your self-timer. If you're on bulb mode, you'd put a uh, remote release in here, a cable release, depress it, lock it, and walk away. And it would take your image uh, over however long you wanted it to. Here you can see the bulb, the, that it's locked up again. Uh, the mirror's still locked up. Let's see if we can get to uh, take a look at the film plane. Nope, don't have enough light to do that. At any rate, um, so mirror lockup is a function that allows you to take pictures where steadiness is highly critical. Very detailed shots. If you're using a low ISO film, like a 25 ISO film or something like that, and you want to take a picture of a building and get each individual brick, well, at that kind of resolution, if you had any camera shake, then uh, you would lose detail. So even if your shot's only going to be a 1 1 25th of a second, you can, use, you can compose everything, use your mirror lockup, and you'll eliminate the camera shake that occurs when the mirror flips up, hits the camera, and then um, uh, causes the camera to have residual shaking as the shutter opens and closes. So that's a mirror lockup function, something that's very, very useful to have uh, on a camera, and definitely something that's worth learning to use to your advantage because it, it can, in, the, in certain situations, really improve your image quality and resolution. All right, so we're taking a look through the viewfinder of the KX right now. Now, on most KXs, along the top, you'd be able to see the aperture that uh, your, your camera is set at. My KX has a problem. It could not be fixed. Uh, there's a problem inside the pentaprism somewhere where the, uh, the mirror does not line up with the aperture. So mine doesn't actually work like that. But most KXs and, and, and MXs and LXs have the same function. You should be able to see the aperture setting in the view at the top of the viewfinder. 
But we're going to look, do while we look through here is see how the um, light meter works. So you can see it's got a needle in there, just like any other light meter from, um, from the K line and the Spotmatics line. But it also has your shutter speeds indicated. So I'm going to set my shutter speed. I would like to take this picture at 1 1 25th of a second, right there. So there's a blue, that, that's blue, it's hard to see in this video, but that, that blue indicator will tell you that you, uh, you're at a 1 1 25th of a second right now. However, my camera's saying that in order to take this picture, I need to be at 1 1 faster than a thousandth. So I'm going to adjust the, um, the, the shutter speed, or the aperture rather, down to 22. And that hasn't even made a dent. Interesting. The yeah, I know why. No, I don't know why. Batteries working. There must just be way too much light coming through here. So I've also set the ISO down as low as it's going to go, and that's not making a dent at all. So this is what happens when you take pictures of a plain white background. Anyway, the way this is supposed to work is that when you're properly exposed, that, that needle, the thin black needle, will overlap the wider blue needle, and that's how you know that you've got your proper exposure. So if it's uh, you're set at one five hundredth of a second, the thin black needle would overlap the wider blue needle at one five hundredth of a second. And that's that's use it how you would use the light meter for the Pentax KX. So between those two functions, the mirror lockup in concert with the uh, with the, the self timer and the um, the light meter usage, you should basically be able to go out and take some any picture you want at this point if you have a KX because every other function works just like each of the camera models uh, below this one. So if you liked this video and my other video on KX please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more of these videos as I make them. Excuse me. If you find them useful please let me know and please let me know what you find useful about them. Give me any comments you have about them, any questions. I'm pretty good about responding to questions pretty quickly, and uh, I'd be more than happy to answer your questions, and, uh, and if you have uh, any ideas for future videos you'd like me to shoot, let me know. I'd be more than happy to do that if I have the technical knowledge. Thank you for watching my video. Okay, and we're back, because I figured out what I was doing wrong with the light meter before. Okay, so there's the thin little needle set at one quarter of a second. I'm going to adjust the aperture. And the aperture is getting wider, I'm up to a 60th of a second. So that means I need to bring my shutter speed indicator back down. Now that's a pretty well exposed image right there. The blue lines over a 60, the blue needles over a 60th of a second, and the black needle is pretty close as well. Uh, and that is how the, the light meter works. And what I had done wrong was I had forgotten to move the um, lever out in order to turn the light meter on the lever has to be out and then you have to half depress uh, the shutter, half depress it and that activates the, the, the light meter for a period. The light meter will then shut off once you push the lever back in. But half depressing the shutter without the lever pulled out doesn't work. Both things have to happen in order for the light meter to be turned on. Uh, everything I said about liking my video and subscribing still stands, so thank you for watching. Bye.